OK, so I will just see how many students arrived now so that I can just start the lecture to look into how many are there. Yeah, there are there. OK, good number of students. OK, uh, good. Uh, Okay, I'll, I'll start the recording so that uh, whoever is missing. Hi. Uh, somebody has written the message. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I'll, I'll start the recording so that people can, uh, if whoever has missed or want to go back, they can just hear the recording. So, okay, so I think the recording has started. Okay, good. Uh, So there is a message. OK, this minute, yeah. So everyone is leaving from the previous class. So the lecture is still chat lecture. OK, so I'll just wait for a few minutes then. One or two minutes more. OK, so by, by that time it's OK. So what we can do, we can. Um, OK, so I'll just uh, because this is our first class, so I just want that you all know me and uh, I know you and uh, and you also know each other. So it means that, you know, if you really want to introduce yourself today to the class, this is the right time for you to introduce because I think you are just sitting uh, at home and it's a good idea, you know, uh, also to talk in class and tell uh, that you are here. Uh, yes, Tata, who is uh, I'm Theo. OK, good. Um, done. Yeah, going good. So what I will do today? So first I will uh, talk about me, and if you if you want to talk about yourself, it's your wish. You can. I know at this point of time, people some people are just shy; they don't want to talk. Uh, but uh, anyway, if some if you know if any any of you want to talk, it's okay. But I will first introduce myself. So I'm Sachin. I'll be your lecturer for data communications and. Uh, I have been teaching this module since many years, uh, so you, you will get a good exposures on, on computer networking, data communications here. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, so if you want to introduce, if anyone of you wants to introduce themselves, uh, you know you, they can do that. Uh, yeah, I know you are your favorite uh, thing is to chat here to write in the chat box, uh, but uh, this I isn't my favorite. So maybe that will help some. Sorry, what do you what did you say? Who is this? Somebody has told something. Okay, good. So uh, actually, my, my okay. So anybody, if not, if nobody wants to uh, give their own introduction, it's it's fine. But if somebody wants to talk, they can they can just talk now. Hi, Sashin. My name is Stephen. Nice to meet you. Hi, good, good. And do you want to talk something about you uh, and introduce yourself to the class? Uh, my name is Stephen. Uh, I'm from the Higher Cert. Um, nice to meet everyone. Yeah, good, good. Very good, uh, Stephen. Uh, anybody else? <laughs> anybody? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, there's one hands up. <laughs> So hi guys, is the is Owen here, and I hope you're all all sane and healthy. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you again. Good. Anybody else? The right time for you, because you are you're sitting at home. So I don't want you to feel isolated. So it means that if you talk in class, and I, I think then everyone will will know you, and if they know you before as well, they can they will hear your name, so they will be happy. OK, so that's fine. So what I will do, so I will just talk a little bit about logistic today uh, and also about your first lecture. But logistic is that if you want to chat with me, if you want to talk to me, if you want to, if you have any questions, you have you have actually three ways to do. So the first way is uh, to, to write the chat as you are writing. And uh, I see some of chats are not related to this module. You are talking about something else which is not related to the 
to the module. So don't write these kind of chats here, you know, uh, because here we are just, uh, you know, talking about the, 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 the module. So I see some, some uh, uh, chats which are not related to the module. So make sure you write what is related to the module. And also, you know, if you want to communicate with me something, then, then just uh, write here in the chat box. And the second, uh, second, uh, I see some of the chats here. You know, now also people are writing, and but you know, uh, make sure you you just write which is actually you know uh, makes sense. You know, for the class. And second thing is the second way of uh, chatting is you know you you raise your hand as you were doing before. Some of you raised uh, their hand, so you can raise your hand, and then uh, my attention will go to you. And the third thing, where the the best way to communicate with me is to actually you know unmute your your microphone and just talk with me and then i will just stop from teaching and i will just take your question that time so it's good for me as well because you know i don't see the chat all the time okay so uh, because it, it, for me it's it, because my I, i'm just taking classes from laptop from my laptop so uh, for me I, I don't go to the chat all the time i just go to the chat after 10 minutes or after 20 minutes i just see what is there in the chat but if there is the chat like you know like some of you have you have written before then it means that you know uh, i have to read use less things you know so make sure if you have any questions that those things you write in the chat box don't, don't write other things you know then then it is just for me i have to read uh, additional stuff which is not useful okay and the second thing is uh, you know uh, second thing is, is important thing for you if you have any questions if you have any uh, so today is not lab so today is the lecture time so what software will will be using for today's lab so today is the lecture time and tomorrow is the lab time. Freddy, is it okay? Yeah, no, no problem. So uh, for for tomorrow's lecture, tomorrow's lab, I we will install Wireshark. So I will ask you to, to install. So so I will talk about that software later in the lab. Okay. Uh, okay, and um, then. Um, uh, yes, so that, that's about it. So let us talk a little bit more about logistic here. So I have a few slides prepared for you to give you the module overview. And also I want to talk also about Moodle. So let us first talk about Moodle here. So I'm sharing my Moodle page. So I know that there are there are two cohorts here. So one cohorts, uh, one, one of the cohort is BSC CIFC too. So all the notes I, I kept in this Moodle page. So uh, there is the BSC IF2 too, but in my Moodle page, there is one more cohort who is taking these classes, which is SCC something. So it's a just a minute. It's SCC NCI2. So for you, the students who are actually who are actually in this cohorts. They need to click on the on the link, which is you know for class notes and all other informations. Please click here. So you need to click here, and then you will go to you will directly go to the another Moodle page, which is BSC SCIFS2 Moodle page. So here you will get all the information about the notes, about your CA, about the logistic, uh, all the other things, whatever you want to, whatever you I have added for your module, it will be here in this module. In this Moodle page, so here you have Microsoft Team link here for Thursday class and for Friday class tutorial or lab class. There is a separate Moodle link. So also you have Moodle link here, and also you have uh, you have uh, Microsoft Team link in your uh, calendar. So you either way you can choose. But I also put the Moodle link here, uh, the, the Teams link here. So you are you can you 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 are. You can actually, you know, go either either through Moodle or through Calendar. It's your wish. It's the same link here, and you have your uh, your lecture notes here. So I'm I'm uh, you know uh, I will first give you the, the the overview about the Moodle about the module here. So I'm I'm actually going through those slides. So now I will actually go through the slides. So uh, sorry, what uh, corner is saying that? Uh, that doesn't show up on my Moodle page. So 
Are you from SCC or, or from B, BSC? BSHC? Connor. SCC. Yes, so your Moodle page is uh, this one. So this is your Moodle page. So you need to click here. So you have click here option here. Are you able to see the click here option? Connor, are you able to see the, uh, the, the click here option? Got it. OK, good. So now, uh, yeah, you just go click here and then you will directly go to the Moodle page where there is everything. Because I'm taking one class at the same time, so uh, I'm just organizing one Moodle page. So I just put every I will just put everything in this BSC HC link, OK? Good. So the Moodle page, so let's go to the module overview. Yeah, do I have a question? So I have. Yes, column. Please ask, yeah. Column, do you have a question? You raised your hand. No, I don't. Oops. OK, no problem. Just. Good, so now I will share my screen. With the. With the slides. So are you able to see my slides? So here this there's a module overview. Yeah, we can see it sound. OK, good. OK, so as this, this is the first class, so I will give you the module overview. So the aim of the module, so the, the, as the name suggests, so the name of the module is data communication. So here you will you will actually learn that how do you need to communicate data? And there is also networking here. It means that how will you use networks for it? OK, so network, it means that network as the, as the name is there, networks, OK, or networking. So it means that it contains network. So network is like a net where you have links and you have nodes. So you will use networks to communicate data. And here in this module, you will study the principles or fundamentals behind data communications, underlying technologies which are used for communications and also number of applications. So applications are very important and, and so we will we will cover number of applications here. But you know, uh, as you know, because you are you all we all are using internet here also for 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 your classes. You know, we are using internet, so it's actually interesting that you know people don't know the underlying te underlying technologies behind computer networks, but people use it. So it means that people already have the use cases uh, of of computer networking without even knowing you know what is the detail behind it. So here in this module, you know, we will we will come to know about the detail and this is the this is the first course in computer networking. OK, so it's a basic module and you will have the advanced module in your third year, um, which is which will be about advanced computer networking and it will have more practical stuff. And you, it means that you will you will learn more uh, more about computer networking there for you know using practical. You'll, you'll have more hands-on experience there. And but in this module, you will have you know basic knowledge of computer networking. You will be able to set up uh, a network. You will be able to you know uh, connect different nodes together and able to use different technologies which you will learn in this module. 
So the learning outcomes. So here in this module, you know, you will learn uh, theory, concepts, and principles of data communication. So you should be able to explain what is it, okay? And you should be able to define important terms in in data communications. For example, you know, routing, forwarding. You know, if you are sending traffic. If you are if you are calling voice, you know through voice, so you should be able to explain how it goes from one node to another or one device to another. You know, so you should be able to talk about communications, the network communications, and uh, you will be able to identify different types of networks. It networks here it means that you know how can you build different network or or different types of network for a particular user for example a user could be a business user or it could be a residential users like us at home currently we are using residential you know internet already uh, residential the network built for residential users so we will be using you know we'll be studying here and i'll be teaching here about the different types of networks which are which are built for communications and uh, you'll be able to apply uh, the theoretical concepts in data communications and also there'll be practical work uh, not much practical but there'll be you know a few uh, lab exercises where you will actually learn how to set up network how to add routing entries how to forward traffic from one node to another you'll be able to understand in 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 in, in the next lab classes and I, I don't think you'll be able you are able to understand what is TCP IP at this, this moment, but later on I will talk about these terms and you will understand, you know, whatever are the functions of this and what are the standards here, you know, how how do we do we have different types of devices and now we are able to communicate. You know, even though we have like, for example, you have laptop from different uh, companies, you know, like, for example, we have laptop from Dell, HP, but we are able to communicate. We are able to run the same software in, in the same laptop, same operating system. And how is it handling and these kind of stuff, you know, you will also learn here. But main important thing is to learn about the networks, about setting up a network, sending sending data from one node to another and finding uh, finding the path to reach there and meeting requirements like the requirements could be performance like requirements latency it means the delay because everyone want you know want want fast internet so here we will we will actually also talk about the requirements and we will talk about current and future communications so what are the the challenges of internet okay so we will here uh, uh, you know we will be you know talking about and you will be you'll be able to identify those you know uh, current and future challenges and recommended book so this is the uh, you know there are two recommended book very good books uh, uh, the one is from you know Franchen and the other one is from Kuras so these two are uh, you, know, uh, you know very good books and the first book 2013 this book actually this is uh, uh, i will book i will use actually this book for for this module and the second book is actually a little bit advanced so once you have the basic knowledge and you want to study a little bit more you can actually go into the second book which is cross okay but, but at the end you know uh, you know in third year you know you will third year where you will have advanced computer networking module there you will actually study both books together but at this moment i will just suggest first study data communications the first book by Frangen. and if you, if something is not clear you can ask me too and if you really want to go deeper you can actually go into the second book which is you know cross book okay okay good so do have a question so it's a time to take chat you know to, to look into chat because you have written something Cisco packet tracers by any chance uh, so column asks a question uh, by any chances will we be using Cisco packet tracer for for the packet uh, practical classes no we will not use Cisco things but we'll be using Wireshark if you want we can use TCP we can use DITG we can use other uh, kind of uh, open source uh, uh, the packet you know uh, tracers and but not the cisco one 
which version of Wireshark. Uh, I will talk about this later, Freddie. Uh, I will talk about it tomorrow. Today is the is the uh, is the lecture class, so you can take any version, but latex latex any version. So so Argo Aron is talking about VMs or two OSs. Uh, for two S's to communicate. You can use VMs if you, if you have already a VM. If you have uh, currently, which operating system do you have, Aaron? Or I will talk about it later, but uh, I don't have any problem with the Windows or Ubuntu or Mac. You can really install Wireshark there. Yes, I will talk about the assessment. Okay, now only, just uh, bear with me, yeah. You can use any operating system. It doesn't matter to me. So OK, so my lab exercises would be you know, quite universal. So. But anyway, you have uh, you can have a virtual machines installed in your in your system. And then later on, my lab exercises would be actually Ubuntu based. So you can what you, what I will do, I will ask you to install virtual box or any 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 virtual machine and then you can have Ubuntu and then you can have uh, you know uh, uh, then you can have those system for you and then you can do practical exercises here. Yeah, that's fine. OK, good. So let us talk about the assessment and one of you wanted to ask about the assessment. So. Let's let us go into that detail. So here. Yeah, so you have actually two, two assessments in your module, so you have a continuous assessment which is carrying actually 40% of weightage and it will have uh, you know mix of multiple choice and long answer questions. So here I would actually put, uh, you know, I will decide the continuous assessment yet, but uh, I have in mind that, you know, I will put uh, multiple choice questions and also long answer questions. And uh, final assessment, it's a TABA. It will be open book exam. Uh, and it means that there will be open questions. It means that questions could be same, but answers could be different, you know, depending on what parameters you choose. I will talk about your TABA later on, you know, uh, where, when the time will come, uh, you know, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I'm talking about continuous assessment currently, so which is in week 12. OK, so you have a continuous assessment that time, so I will talk about these in, 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 the, in, the, in the coming weeks. You know, it, it st we still have time. OK, so it will be just one continuous assessment that will be in, in week 12. Uh, that will be in the class time and TABA, it's, it's, uh, it's in January. So in January 2021, I think 5th of January or 6th of January, but you need to check the, the, the details. You can get it from exam office and also I will put it in the Moodle, but it will be an open book exam. So all questions will be long answer questions. Yeah, it's an open book. Yeah, it is new to you because you know we are in the online mode. So it means that you know you can use your material in your TABA, but in your um, um, CA, I would not suggest you to use your CA material because it is timed uh, and there'll be multiple choice questions. So you just have to use, you know, um, you don't have to use any material, uh, class material uh, in your CA. Yeah, James, bear with me. I will talk about, you know, uh, CA later on, lab time or lecture time, later on when I will actually, you know, write your CA. You know, it's in 12th week, so you still have plenty of time. But my favorite time would be the lab time. Last year, uh, I took in the lab time, but I will decide. But it will be on week 12. Uh, so I have already specified it's in the week 12. So in week 12, I will choose either uh, um, a lecture time or the lab or the tutorial time or lab time. OK, uh, depending on if it is a it is very long, then I will choose the lecture time. If I I'll just put a few questions, then it will be, you know, a tutorial time or lab time. OK. <clears throat> 
Any other questions from assignment side? Assessment side? So let us go further. Uh, uh, can I just, just ask, ask um, um, for, for the continuous assessment? assessment. Yeah, uh, it says week 12. Well, is there an actual date, date yet? Yeah. Or will that be um, posted on the Moodle um, yes. later on? Yes, yes, I will put it by next week. So don't worry. So, uh, so by next week, I will put the date. Yeah. But it's in the week 12, so there's a question, are there any smaller exams before the week 12? Yeah, we can have exams, but those won't be graded, okay? So there will be formative assessments, so it means that I will put a few assessments in your lab time, So, but those won't be graded. But you, you know, the assessment which will take place in uh, week 12, that will be graded. Sean, did you... Get it? Okay. So there will be two assessments. One is at week 12. I will tell you the date and uh, the, the, the day uh, uh, by next week. I will put it in the Moodle. But it is week 12. It is fixed. Okay. Okay, good. So do you have any other question? Okay, so module outlines. So I don't think, you know, we should, you know, talk about each and every terms here for module outlines. But, you know, uh, you know, big takeaway is that, you know, we will, uh, you know, first study the basic uh, theory about data communications later on we will actually go into layer by layer you know uh, step by step you know how to how data communication works so okay so first uh, step or first two or three weeks would be just basics about data communications where you will learn how networks are designed what kind of networks are there and then later on i will go step by step into 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 more complex topics okay so i don't think there is a use of you know talking about each and every topic of your module so anyway there, there, there is a module descriptor uh, it's, it's in your moodle page you can look into but uh, you know so now i will just go into into your lecture the first day lecture okay so that's that's for for module overview so do you have any other questions okay good So slide as all the slides and material uh, is there in your Moodle page. So you can also open it uh, now, but, but it is here as well. But uh, are you able to see my slides? Uh, Introduction to data communications and networking lecture lecture one. Yes. No, 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 you can't because I didn't share it. Now you should be able to see. Yeah, all good. All good? Okay. So introduction to uh, data communications and networking. Okay, so, you know, First, uh, what do you understand by data communications? So, okay, can you just explain? So, if I uh, talk about, okay, so you are, uh, you are, you know, uh, you are learning about data communication. So, if I say that, you know, you will study about data communication. So, what do you understand by that? The transfer of data over the internet? Yes, 
transfer of data, not internet. Data communication doesn't say anything about internet. Okay, internet is a big term. Okay, uh, but data communication is, is is talking about that you need to transfer data from one point to another, whether it is internet or whether it is a small network or whether it is a two device. It, it doesn't matter for it. So irrespective to devices or networks or any kind of infrastructure. So just say that you just want just need to communicate. You just to transfer data from one point to another point. And networking here, it means that you will use networks. You will come to know how computer networks are designed. So can you also talk about network? Okay, so it's fine. So I will actually use paint. OK, so network here. So network is actually, you know, net. Network, so we have actually two things here. One is net and other one is works. So here net, what is net? Do you know net? I think you all must be knowing. So net is like this. So we have. So we have actually here links, you have lines and you have points here in nets. So network is also like that. So points are actually nodes. So node can be anything like your router or your modem or your phone, anything. So here these are the, the routers or nodes and then these are the links. It means that how they are connected. The links could be either you know a wired link or it could be wireless link. Or if, if I want to say specifically, wired link could be, you know, like optical fiber, like Ethernet cables. I think you may be knowing about these terms, uh, or wireless link, you know, so like your Wi Fi channel, or it can be Bluetooth as well. Okay, so you have a uh, different connection, how you make networks, but network looks like this it contains nodes and links. So here, so this is network. So it means that you use, you make use of net. It's like a net and you make use of this net. So works is you make use of this net. So this is network. So do you understand by the, the meaning of network now? Yeah. Okay, good. Yes, that's very right. Okay, good, very good. So now we have terms like telecommunication. So it is very important because these terms are actually related. So today's you know, lecture is more you know, very basic. You know, here I will introduce you about some terms which are, you know, you know, people know it, but people don't know, you know, why it is called like that, why it is defined like that. You know, I will just try to make it quite simpler. So like we have a word telecommunication. So Can you explain me what is it as the name is it is is there? So you have actually two words. One is tele and the other one is communication. So can you define for me what is telecommunications? So because when I talk about data communications, actually, you know, many terms comes into telecommunications, data communications, computer networking. So now I think you understood computer networking. Here I, here I have drawn net and then computers are used here. So nodes are computer in computer networking. So like the way 
it's telecommunications okay so how will you define telecommunication so can you explain the, me what is, is the it? transfer is it the transfer of data via um, a wired or wireless connection are you defining telecommunications or, or something else yeah the, no 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 that's no. not yeah, no, no. is it communication over a long distance yes that's very good because we have a word tele this is a tele word and meaning of the tele has, is, is a greek word actually its meaning is far away do you understand now and now you want to communicate far away do you understand it so can you define now telecommunications yep. for me like like stephen just told you know the right you know yeah i i understand it now yeah how about others yeah geographically yeah far away you know you want to communicate far away you know so that is telecommunications okay so here like for example we are using internet actually we are using telecommunications because we want to communicate uh, communicate you know uh, through the nodes which are far away from each other which are distant apart you understand so that is called telecommunications did you get it here yes that's very clear thank you let us define today you know it's very uh data all the important terms here so can we define data now is it information in its rawest form yes information but raw form it can be raw form or it can be any form it doesn't matter but it's a kind of information so like for example in computer networking or data communications data could be you know yeah yeah alex and he says it is a unprocessed fact but you know data is kind here yeah in some language in, in we can say in, in when we talk about data analytics there we say that data is a raw information okay but here in computer networking we 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 say it it is a information it can be of any format it means that it can be you know data text data it can be you know voice data it can be a video data so any format the information which you want to send it can be in raw form or it can be a processed data or text data which is understandable by anybody it, it could be readable data it could be unreadable data because here you know it's, it's a kind of data which you want to transport from one place to another so here it can be raw it can be it can be you know not raw it means that you can read it or you cannot read it, it doesn't matter so it means that the data in any form okay so data make sure that, you know i'm just explaining you that data is a plural word of data so data is not one thing so it means that it can be it can contain multiple information okay so it can be it can have you know uh, multiple text altogether it can also be called data or it can have one text together so it's a plural form of data data do you get it here no it's not time you can you're not time 20 minutes 20 Sorry. did you say 20 minutes Oh, domestic. Ah! Oh man, turn off your mic, bro. Turn off your you mic. Never ever say you're you're good at math. Please, who is this? Please unmute your mic here. Are you okay. Sorry. Call nine one one. Okay, just unmute. Sash. Sash, as I said, just mute everyone. You can do that because you're the organizer. Yeah, I can. I can do it. Uh, to... Yeah, mute all. Yeah, I muted all. Okay, that's fine.
Okay, so what do you mean, you know, if I say that your data communication is, you know, uh, effective? Okay. Effective here, it means that, you know, uh, how will you measure the performance of your communication? So, for example, we are using internet, you know, how will you say that? When will you say that, okay, your internet has actually worked very good? It's, it's actually very good and the speed, the uh, actually effectiveness, you know, how will you, how will you say that? When will you say that, you know, your data communications have, uh, is actually, you know, uh, very effective. So how will you measure it? By speed and clarity. Yeah. Yes, clarity, accuracy. And real time data, like for example, now we are talking, we are in online mode where, you know, uh, you know, we are we are talking online. We are in the live session. So timeliness is also very important in data communications where, you know, uh, we reach the, you know, uh, data, you know, where data is actually sent or it is received on time. OK, so that's that's uh, that's the important things in, in, in data communication. So do you understand here? So we have uh, uh, we have these important criteria of 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 data communications. So now I will talk about the important components of uh, data communications. So are you able to see my paint? Yes, you are able. OK, so I will actually draw a few component of data communications. So we in data communication, so we have five components which are very important. So the first thing is the sender machine. And the second machine is the receiver machine here. So we have the receiver. And then third important thing is actually, can you say what is important? What are the components of data communications? The message. Message, very good. I was just about to say message, so data. And third thing is, sorry, fourth thing is, transmission media. Do you understand here? Like for example, you will use a uh, wired cable or you can say wired media or wireless media. So as you know that, you know, the speed, if you use wired, wired media, the speed is actually quite good because it's a confined media and it means that your data can propagate from one point to another quite easily. And the, the next thing is, Actually, the very important thing is protocol. This is, the, this is the last very important thing which we need to follow. So do you understand by the protocol? So why I have written protocol here? What is protocol? So like for example, I am talking to you and you are listening. So we are following a protocol. Rules. Rules. We are following some rules. So it means that how messages would be sent. How, you know, when should it be received or sent by the by the sender machine? Or what is the format of the data? For example, you have a data and it means that each and every uh, data should have the destination address attached to it. So now receiver has to receive that destination, that, that data. It should know that where the, the header is located. It means that it should know where the destination address is located so that it can read and can find that the data is actually destined to the particular receiver or not. Do you understand it? So we should need, we need to follow some rules here and this is actually given by protocol. Do you get it here? Yes, thank you, that's clear. Good. So we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, these five important components of uh, uh, of uh, data communications. So 
the do you understand by data um, uh, what kind of data you some were saying uh, raw data some were saying uh, you know uh, human readable data so but it can be any data text format or it can also be ascii code value so do you know ascii american standard for uh, uh, for communications uh, for code uh, and ios standards international organizations for standards the these code are there so we our data could be like for example we have high level languages like c uh, etc or we have also assembly etc so you know everything could not be you know bind binary bits so we need to you know have some code words like a has some you know value in ascii format so that computer can actually understand what is it whether it is a or whether it is b or zero or or something so it means that we need to have some words like uh, and it means that you know those code words you know could also be the 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 the, the text here could or could, could also be the data here so data could be any format like text format like voice format it can be you know video format it it can be you know uh, any other you know uh, format you know which you know pe you know which others can understand it means that you know uh, you know you can send data in any format okay so now what i will do i will i will i think i will take a break now for 10 minutes Uh, do you need a break now? I think you need a break now. Is it? Okay. So what we can do, we can take a ten minutes of break, and we'll be back in in ten minutes. Is it okay? Yeah, that's great. Cheers. Yeah. Okay. Cheers. So we'll meet in in ten minutes. So it'll be. That's grand. See you then. Yeah, 48, and it means that 58 will be here. Is it okay? Okay, good. So, see you in 10 minutes.
हेलो हाय हाय सो ओके सो द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक ऑफ योर लाइक टुडेज लेक्चर इज टू टॉक अबाउट you know direction of flows it means that how will you send or how a node send data from you know one point to another so there are you know a different mode of uh, communications so here i will talk uh, mainly about you know two uh, three nodes three modes so one here so one here is the is the direction of flows it means that you know uh, you have you know uh, the direction how you need to uh, you know transmit your data so you have actually three modes one is the simplex simplex here it means that you know you can just transmit transmit from one node to another so there is just one way connection here so it means that you know you can uh, actually you know uh, transmit from a to b but you cannot transmit from b to a it's like you know your television connection where you get you know your television signal uh, you know so it means that it is just one way so that that kind of flow or that kind of communication is is called simplex okay so you have slides available in your uh, in your moodle so uh, you know you can also look into slides later on but uh, uh, today here you know to explain it more clearly i will use this paint so that you understand it otherwise with the slides it's, it's you know you can you know it's it's not comfortable most of time i in the, in the class i just use the white board but here uh, i i found this you know this is also a good way to to actually you know uh to 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 communicate or to to teach here so that's why i'm i'm just using this but later on i will use slides you know whenever it is required so first mode is is actually simplex mode where you can just transmit one way from a to b like like for example from a to b but you cannot transmit you know reverse like b to a so it's one way direction one way communications so do you understand the simplex mode of operation yes okay so second is the is the half duplex half duplex here it means that you know you can transmit either way but not at the same time so what does it mean you can transmit from a to b or b to a but at different time so if you want because it's the same channel here so it means that you know you cannot use the same cable to, for for communication at the same time in either way so here you you have to use you know different timing for for uh, for a to b and for b to a so this is half duplex it means that it doesn't work you know uh, both way at the same time so you have either one way or or the second way the you know the flow of data but it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's at a different time to understand it 
So we have half duplex here, which means that you can just send either way, but you know at different time. Yep. OK, good. So the third way is the full duplex here. So your link could be, you know, full duplex uh, as well. Here it means that you have completely you have you now media where you can transmit both way at any time. It means that at the same time or, you know, at the different time, it doesn't matter because the channel will be different. So it means that there won't be any collisions if you send the data either way. So it will not collide. It means that the, 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 there won't be any destruction of the data. So it means that da data would be, you know, would be able to receive correctly, even though you send data at the same time from either direction. So this is a full duplex. It means that you will be able to communicate, you know, uh, communicate uh, both ways at the same time too. But in half duplex, you can just transmit either one way or the other way, not at the same time. Is it okay? So you have these three kinds of mode of operations, half duplex, uh, full mm -hmm. duplex, and simplex mode. Simple enough? Sorry? Uh, simple enough. Simplex. I meant simple, simple enough, you know? Yeah. What do you mean by that? I mean, it's easy, easier to see which one's simplex, which one's half duplex, and which one's full duplex. Do you want to practically see in the, the cables? Do you want to say that? No, it's just I understand what, what each, each of the tree mean, you know? Yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah. So, do you understand the meaning then? Yes. Okay, good. What he means is that it's simple enough to understand, like it's easy to differentiate the two of them. Uh, yes, if you have a cable, then you can easily differentiate it because it because if you go to nowadays, you will all the cables are full duplex cable as well on only because now you know technologies ha has advanced, you know. But earlier, like Ethernet cables, all Ethernet cables were half duplex. But nowadays, all Ethernet cables are full uh, full duplex cables uh, with the technology advanced, you know, and they are also cheaper. Earlier, they were, you know, not cheaper because you know people were not knowing the technologies how to make it, you know. But you will know about these, you know, these uh, kind of technologies later. But uh, later on, I will I will actually go in deep in this question that how you can actually, you know, distinguish half duplex cable or full duplex. But at this point of time, I'm just defining it. It is there in your next chapter anyway. Okay, did you get it or do you? Okay, so, okay, good. Yeah. So let us go into your slides too, so. So you have here uh, simplex, half duplex. So are you able to see the slides, the direction of data flow, where there are three transmission modes, simplex, half duplex, and full duplex. Simplex is one way, it's two way, and here data on time. Okay, so network criteria. So introduction about network. So here I will talk about what is the criteria of the network. So I think you have already touched uh, about it. When I, I talked about uh, uh, the network criteria, what like performance, like uh, number of nodes or hardware installed or software installed. So here I will talk about those metric when you choose the, the network. Like for example, when you use, you know, when you buy internet, for example, if you buy internet from uh, from ESB or, e, uh, or EIR, sorry, EIR or, uh, or Virgin Media, you actually see, you know, different, criteria like what is the speed uh, of the network what guarantees it is giving what is the performance of the network you know such kind of you know uh, metrics you see and when we see say the performance and performance of network depends on the type of nodes used use type of hardware used or number of users connected to to, to the network so here the i think i have already gone through this these slides so here in the we are in the network criteria so here 
factor affecting network performance. So if you have a network and it means that, you know, how network performance, uh, you know, will vary. So if I say that, you know, um, that we have a network, so So we have a network. So here. So we have a network here. For example, nodes are connected together. So if you want to measure performance of this network. So here it will depend on, you know, uh, number of nodes connected to or number of users connected to this network. So if you number of users are more, if number of users are more, it means that, you know, the performance will be affected. So it means that, you know, the, 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 the network will not perform as good as it should because the network traffic will be high. Okay, you can assume that if number of users to the network, so you can always see that, you know, some sometimes you see see that, you know, you know, you know, Virgin Media or any kind of network which you which you are, you know, where, from where you have actually bought the internet connectivity. So it means that, you know, it's in some area it works fine, even though the infrastructure and the number of nodes they have installed, they are they are the same. They are, they, they are equal number of nodes, but the performance varies because you know, num maybe number of users connected to the network are are actually more there. And also the kind of you know network nodes and transmission medium. So it's it's like do, do you know about Ethernet cables, optical fiber cables? Some yeah, of you yeah, must be knowing yeah, because yeah. They, they are quite common because we are actually using internet. That's the that's the you know beautifulness you know there's a kind of thing of this module that we know the practical work of this you know uh, this module you know without even knowing the underlying technologies which is actually you know uh, qu quite good for for this that, and this makes it quite interesting and i feel that you know this module is is not only for you know for computer people but it's also for other uh, engineering people you know so everyone should know about computer networking Yes, John is asking a question in our network class. Are we going to learn about security like man in the middle? No, uh, you will have the, the module in fourth year, which is uh, security principles. There you will learn this, not in this module, in the fourth year module. OK, John. OK, uh, so here, so the f first performance metric is the, is the number of users and then number of hardware. So, so, so the hardware number of nodes here, you know, and then you can always say is the transmission medium. So as you know, you, you already know about optical fibers and you know about Ethernet cables because we use Internet, you know, and which one is faster? Fiber optic. Yeah. Optical fiber, yes. And why it is faster? It just pauses a light rather than traveling through copper. Yeah. No disruptions. Sorry? No disruptions. No disruptions. We use light and which are, which has more speed and no disruption. Ethernet can have, you know, disruption. It can have, you know, data because it needs a repeater all the time at, at, at the smaller distance. So that's, that's, that's quite good. It means that you have a good knowledge of Networking, some of you, is it? Yeah, I did a two year networking course. Two years networking course from Cisco, is it? Yeah. Okay, good. But not also, Sorry? Oh, sorry. It's just, I also did network essentials back in Whitehall. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so there's another question from Freddy. Will we learn anything on the topic of security? Um, no, not really. Uh, you will learn, but very minute. But this this module is about communications, data communications. It's about networking, and uh, there is a different module on security. Uh, not in this module, Freddie. 
and it is in the fourth year where you actually learn about security principles, fundamentals of security, DODS, all types of attacks, you know, uh, not in this module. And I'm afraid to say, but but because it's a basic module. So make sure I, you said that you have two years, one of you said that you have two years of experience in networking. Uh, that's very good for this module because you know it. Um, yeah, you covered internet security, but this is a basic module on data networking, you know. Okay, so you have covered internet security back in semester two. Okay, good. So you will you will have the knowledge then, but not about network. So it's uh, this is more on basic networks, layers, OSI models, TCP IP model, routing, etc. You will learn here. Not about you know. Yes, you will you will learn how to make you know own private network, but it's as it's a one first module, so. It, it's not as much as practical as, as the second module, which is advanced computer network, where you will learn actually socket programming. So that's in third year. Okay. Good. Yeah, so here I will actually talk about basic stuff because it's a basic module and this is designed for for newcomers. I think there are there are some people here who have background in networking, but I think most of you do not have. So can you raise uh, your hand who have the, the networking background so that I just know how many people has the network? Raise your hand and, and tell me that you have the networking background already. So one, two, yeah, so there are, yeah, so there are uh, five people here, who, no, four people, okay. So the three, okay. So three students have a uh, uh, networking background but in the class we have uh, more than 60 so we have 64 students so only four people have so it means that you know i should not you know uh, assume that everyone knows you know networking because this is also this module is also designed in such a way that it's for you know people who who doesn't know much about internet they just know how to use internet but they don't know about the networking underlying technologies behind it tcp ip or osi you know models so more importantly you know how to do traffic you know and also about physical layer you know where uh, where you know what kind of you know data what kind of transmission media are there so only four or five people here who have um, networking background so but i should just go with the pace i used to go uh, so I will I will not assume that everyone know about everything, you know. So then, I'll, is it okay? Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, Freddie, yeah, I understand. Yeah, you know about optical fibers, so that it's, it's fine. So it's fine. So fair knowledge or innate. So maybe if you have a networking module, so maybe you can just talk with your uh, with your program director whether you can transfer if you have uh, transfer the credit from your network essential course to here. So you don't have to do it then. Maybe it's, it's a good idea to talk to your uh, program director. Who is your program director? Lisa or yeah, Lisa. Maybe if you are interested, if you if you really want to, you know, um, uh, you know, transfer credit from your previous module to here, I, it may be possible. I think last year, you know, somebody has transferred who, who who has already done some courses, some networking modules in other universities, so he has transferred the the credit. Maybe you can just do it. Can we do that? Like, if we got it from another college, maybe, or is that strictly from NCI? No, another college also, Cisco or um, you can you just have to check with your program director. It's cool, a, okay. Just talk uh, talk with her. Uh, 
uh, and uh, she will redirect you to, 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 the, to the correct information. But most probably it can be done. But I don't know. You have to talk with Thank the program you. director. But because if you have already, you know, information about everything, you know, about this module, you see the content learning, we will just, I will just match. I think then it will just come to me. I, maybe I will just match the learning outcome from, of that module and my module here. And if it is same, then you don't have to do it. Is it okay? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. But you for but you need to show the proof that you have already done that module. But you just talk with Lisa if it is possible. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So the second important uh, things about network criteria is about reliability, where we see that you know. The network has failed or uh, or not. It means that you know how many times it failed. You know what is the recovery time. So most of uh, you know networks or most of you know internet service providers uh, they say that you know they they provide uh, five nines of reliability. It means that they are down just for for a few seconds in in a year. So it means that people actually service providers they actually provide they also actually give you know big availability. It means that they say that they are available most of time. Uh, so 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 it's, it's very important. So we actually you know uh, whenever you know people buy or business users buy you know internet, so they say this they also see reliability requirements here. So what are what are the reliability requirement of their network or does it match with the with the service providers? So those are actually very important. And third most important thing is you know robustness uh, you know for catastrophical failures. For example, if earthquake happens, so whether you know network is able to support or not. So those kind kind of network criteria are, are very important. And there are last but it, it's very important but in this you know, in this module, we will not touch too much about this, which is about security, as I told you before. But security is also very important criteria when when we talk about networks. So that's the that's the thing here. So here, how to measure the performance of network, or how to you know take which you know which service providers network. So we we actually you know talk about different parameters. So I talked about performance. I talked about reliability. I talked about security. Is it okay? Yep. Good. So now we are in the in the next topic, which is about distributed processing. So do you understand by distributed processing? So as the name is distributed, okay. So it means that load of the node or of the network is distributed. It means that it is given to remote nodes. But your local machine thinks that you know, or you can you can say users think, not local machine user thinks that you know. Uh, that you know uh, all the work is done by the local machine, but you know it's it's transparent. It means that the work is offloaded somewhere else. So it means that the work is given to the distribute the network which is distributed. So like for example, the best example of distributed processing is is cloud cloud computing where you offload you know your load on on cloud servers. So do you understand by by cloud uh, by 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 distributed processing? So can you give me an example of distributed processing which you actually you know use in your real time example real time uh, scenarios Any example which you think like for example text messages like for example we are now you know uh, using teams to, to to actually communicate so here actually you know uh, you are able to, you know, uh, hear me. Able to, you know, uh, uh, communicate with me. Able to stream uh, with me. So it's actually, you know, it's a team. The part of teams, it, it, it's here. Okay. So here you are using a sort of program, but actually the 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 biggest work is done somewhere else in the cloud servers. 
So here also we are using some some kind of distributed processing. So it means that you know a part of work is done somewhere else. So like it's a client server programming or when when we do browsing when when we you when we open a website so we we open a website in a laptop but actually when we you know stream or when we see you know open video somewhere somewhere so it's not you know completely in your in your laptop or in your machine it's, it's distributed so it, it's somewhere else in the system it, not in the in the same system but some somewhere else remotely so that's kind of distributed processing where you share the load you use remote resources and then you distribute the load among multiple nodes do you get the meaning of distributed processing now? Yeah, good. So now I will go to slides. Um, OK, so here uh, like the definition of the distributed processing is written where remote computers cooperate via network to appear as local machines. But actually, whenever user communicate with the local machine, user thinks that everything is done on. It's oh, yes. Never mind. The thought your screen wasn't working there for a second. Sorry, sorry. It just didn't loud for a second. It's loud. I can see it now. OK. So uh, as I told you, you know, you are, you know, machines are, you know, it means that mach machines are able to cooperate with remote machines, and it means that you can offload, you know, part of work to other machines, so that you know you can do high computations in, in the machine. So it, it has actually, you know, big advantages. Like for example, we have mobile devices, and now you know, if if you open a, open an app, so it's not that everything is actually processed in your in your uh, in your phone, but it's actually you know processed somewhere else so that you can you can actually run you know big complex you know uh, the programs in your in your system or in your phone so that's kind of distributed processing so we always use it you know uh, but but i think today some you know most of you know, knew that you are actually using some kind of distributed processing where you know not everything is run on your system but it is distributed um, performance okay you know that you can actually you know increase you you can actually offload uh, your your program load to somewhere else it means that you have opportunity to actually increase the number of nodes in the network so uh, network which can do the work job it means that you don't have to every time if there is a new service new program to run if it needs you know you know uh, powerful resources you don't have to change you know your hardware your user and device you just have to increase the number of nodes in the network and then you can take the job from those nodes which is actually you no know, big advantage of your you know uh, distributed system and and it's also you know very good for for security point of view because the, because the reason is you know uh, everything is not stored or run by the by by one node it means that it has more flexibility from security point of view because you can really store things securely somewhere else in the, in the, in the network and people may not be knowing where it is you know stored so that's also very very important here and second third, uh, next important thing is reliability because you know it may happen that your system is, is crashed then your all data is gone but using distributed processing because you know many nodes are involved so it means that you can actually store data you know anywhere uh, in the nodes or maybe in multiple nodes like for example we have you know if we have, we open youtube channel and youtube channel and it is you know it is it is using a cloud server so it's actually data is replicated everywhere so you can actually you can have you know uh, replications of data which which means that you know it has more reliability it means that even though one server is down you can make use of other other servers okay and next is fault tolerance so it's, it's a kind of same meaning even though one server is down the other you can just use it so it is tolerant to, to it is tolerant to to false 
And the, the, the example is file server program. So it's same as we have a, a client application and we have server application. Like for example, if you open a website and that's the, from a server, so that's a server now and the client opens it. So here, you know, much of the processing is done by server, but we see everything in the client, like web browser gets open in the, in the client machine itself. So we have, we have a glance that we think that, you know, as a user, we think that everything is run in your system, but it's actually in the server, in the remote machines. So it's a good example of, you know, distributed processing. Yes, so, so browser and client server machines. So in client server machine, client is always, uh, you know, uh, client always works like a, like a, like a slave, but uh, uh, a server always works like a master because he has, he has, it has authority. It means that, you know, server has all the data or all the, you know, uh, power to, to run the, uh, to run the, to run the program. So it means that, you know, server will just behave uh, like a, like a master and server is always, you know, it's, it's a master kind of, you know, behavior. So it's, it's actually called master and client is always called slave. So this is an example of the distributed processing. Yes, so links. So let us talk about, uh, you know, node and links. So can you define a node for me? So what do you understand by node? Yeah. Is it a point in a network? Yes, point in a network. Yes, diagram. The, using diagram, I can tell you it's, it's a point. Yeah, but it's a diagram. But but really, how will you define it? Yeah, it can be a cell tower, but how will you define it? It can. It is a like. What is your phone? What is your router? Modem. communication device yeah a node a node is an active device which is able to active electronic device that's a very important thing is active electronic device active means which is active it means that which is able to pass information is it okay and uh, electronic means should be a, an issue should be an electronic device so here it's an elective electronic device which is able to send, receive, and forward information. So it means that your, your laptop, your phone is, is a note, your base station is a note, your access point is a, is a, is a note, and anything, whatever you see. And then you see the connection in between. These are the connection, these are the links. Is it okay? So do you understand uh, the meaning of node? I'm, because I'm here all the time. I will actually talk about node all the time. Road is, node is a general name for, you know, uh, yes, so I will explain. Yeah, Alex is asking, can I explain a node again? Yeah, it's good that I defined it because I didn't put it in the slide, but I was thinking that you know it, but it's okay. So I will use the paint now to explain it. So when you design a network, so you have actually two things. One is the is the node. Node means which is able to because you have your link, which just pass through the information. So whatever comes in, it just goes. So here in the in the in the internet or in the network, we have actually two things. One is the node, which is which can be a router, which can be a mobile device, which can be a modem, which can be anything which is able to send and receive information and also forward information. So it means that even though your mobile device is there also called node. So it's a kind of active device. So active means which is able to, you know, receive information and send information and also, you know, which is, you know, able to, you know, process the information. 
so if you say about link you know links links just transmit the the information okay so they have they have just information which just pass through the information and you are able to connect different nodes together so that is the link okay but node is the is the node why do we node why why do we need nodes in in internet why can we not connect to two devices together like for example if you want to call from you know from ireland to, to the us and why there is just not one direct connection why do we do it need to go through uh, through nodes can you can you explain me why do we need many nodes here like for example my question is here we are in ireland so if i want to connect with another node which may be node means you know your phone you want to call somebody who is staying in the us why there is not a direct connection between these two you know why does it need to go through like that we have another node we have another node maybe like that maybe another node then maybe going through like that and like another node so it may be going like this like this and then going like that why not why there is not a direct connection Is it because sometimes we don't know the exact location of what the information is that we want? One of the reasons, but it's not the exact reason. Any other? It's not completely correct. Uh, Does it help to prevent disruption? Um, at first, is it possible to have such a connection like direct cable between each countries yes is it possible not a direct cable it is, yeah no it's not possible practically and second there thing are, is uh, fiber optic even though that are buried under the sea. sorry there are fiber optic cables buried under the sea yes but it is not possible to connect each and every devices just directly without having no, 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 every single device no 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 but like one country to another if it was like one machine or something like that or one node to another yeah yes but yes there there are optical fiber cable but there is also it's not that there, there are not any shortcomings they can be you know built for larger distance but then you need devices if there is you know destruction upper occur if there is a loss there are errors we need repeaters we need other kind of air drop multiplexers which can actually uh, drop traffic to another part so it means that you know it's not possible to connect directly it may be for some distances not you know very large distances because we have our own shortcomings of the devices itself and second thing is you you know uh, uh, the important thing is to routing how to perform routing as etc et so you need to you know take into account all structures you know each and every node has the path we don't have the uh, you know it's not that we know the path exactly from the center node it means that you know every node have, have to take decisions on how to forward traffic do you get this point yeah that's fine okay so that's why we have node node is an active device which is able to send receive and process information is it okay and link link is a, is a, is a, is, a, is a connection which actually connects two points or two nodes together so that's why we have a, we have a router in our house or or a modem where you know you have the you, you send all the traffic to that device and then devices because our laptop or our phone or devices do not have that capability you know so they 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 have the capability to reach there but they have their own shortcomings so router device will have you know you know you know more more, more there will be more powerful machines it means that you know the, the traffic could be sent to, to to the base stations and then you can actually you know the communications can happen so here uh, it has you know uh, its its own advantages disadvantages so anyway we need more nodes here um, you know so that you can actually you know make the connections so node is an active device which is able to send transmit uh, receive and forward informations and a link is is a connection between two two nodes is it okay so do you understand node yeah yeah that's clear thank you 
Thank you. So now let us talk about you know links. So the connections. So we have actually two uh, two kinds of connection: point to point connections and point to multi point connections. So point means you uh, here you are connecting two nodes together. So you have two nodes: node A and node B, and you are connecting. Point to point means it's one point is connected to another point. It can be Wi-Fi connection here. So you have Wi-Fi interface here and you have Wi-Fi interface others uh, of the other node and you connect it point to point. There is just point one to one connection here. OK, so that is uh, point to point connection. And then we have point to point point to multi point connections where one node is able to connect with multiple devices at the same time. It's kind of access point. Or, or your router at home, which connects with multiple devices. So we have two kinds of connection. One is the point to point connection and the other one is point to multi point connection where you know one point is connected with multiple point. Is it OK? Yeah, that's all good. OK, good. Um, so now uh, we will uh, talk about different topologies uh, which can be used you know in different networks so uh, let us talk about those topologies so so we have actually four we will study here four kinds of topologies one is the is the mesh topology The other one is the is the uh, star topology, and then ring topology, and then bus topology. And we have also hybrid. It means that you can use mesh and star or ring all together, or mesh or star or any combinations of these topologies together. But in internet, we in, not in in networks, not in internet. Internet is is a big term, you know. So it means that it's a network of networks. Internet, if we want to define internet. So it's, it's the largest network of networks, you know, but here I'm talking about network. So here uh, the topology is in network. So do you understand by mesh? So do you understand by mesh topology? So if you don't understand, so it means that I will I will just explain it. So you can say that, you know, you have multiple nodes and you have point to connect point connections between each and every nodes. So that's a mesh kind of topology. It's highly meshed. It means that it, it is more connected. So Maria, so what do you understood? What did you not understand? So I'm in the chat box now. So you are you asked that please uh, explain. Which one? Yes, that's the meaning here, right? So here what I want to say that like mesh topology, it means that any node can connect with. Any other node, so we have uh, point to point connections here, you know, with each and every node. So here this is there is a five, you know, uh, uh, you know, a five node network. So here each and every node ha uh, has the direct connection with each and every other node. So it's a highly meshed network because we have high connectivity. So for example, if we have two nodes, so here we can just have you know one connection. So it means that you just need one cable. OK, so you just need one cable here. So I, I see the chat here is on. So basically the net he drew earlier. Does that mean that any node can connect to each other? And the net, what do you mean net? So when you were explaining network, you drew a net. I think it's slightly different from the mesh. Yes, it's slightly different because here we have connection uh, with each and every nodes directly. And even though if one cable, is, you can, I will say the advantages later. But first, let us let us see. We have two new nodes, and if you want to create, you know, mesh kind of networks, it means that you just need one cable here. And if you have you know, uh, nodes, you know, if you have three nodes, so if you want to create mesh network, it means that now 
one node, it means that with two nodes, you just have one connection. And if you have additional one node, it means that it needs to connect with each and every other node. So it means that you need additional you know, connections. So now in this case, you need actually three cables. So here's my question. My, I'm here solving a question. So if we want to create a, a mesh topology, you know, uh, uh, with the with three nodes, how many cables you need? So in this case, you see that you know, uh, you know, when we have you know uh, two nodes, we just need you know one cable. When we have three nodes, we need you know uh, three cables. So which is you know uh, you know, and this much. And when we have four nodes, can you can you tell me how many cables are needed? to actually you know uh, have a mesh network of four nodes so it means that one node is connected here four cables no this is not correct so here it means that if a fourth node is added so it means that this node will need connection one. with sorry six six is correct why i will explain you so it means that now fourth node is added. So it means that now it needs connection with each and every other nodes. So three more cable. You see that earlier it had three cables. Uh, you know it needed three cables, and now you have added the fourth node, and now you need three additional cables. So six cables. You get it here. And now if we have yeah, that's great. Fifth node connected. Good. Fifth node connected. Can you tell me how many connections you need? How many cables you need? No. Eight. Eight. Uh, eight. Okay, so I will, I will explain what is it. So here you have you already need six yeah. cables for for four nodes. So if fifth node is connected, so it means that it it now needs to connect with all the other four nodes. So it means that one, two, three, four. So six are already. There, so six plus four is ten. So it needs ten cables. Do you get it here? Yeah. Like the same way, we can actually build, uh, you know, larger, bigger network here. Where let let us suppose we need one more node. So it means that you can actually, you know, uh, get the number. So if you really need the formula, formula is if there are n nodes in the network. Just. Uh, Tied it up so yeah. If we have uh, n nodes in the network, so we actually need n multiplied by n minus one divided by two cables. So it means that, like for example, you had uh, you know uh, five nodes, so you needed ten cables. So five nodes means you just have to replace uh, you know n with five. So five multiplied by five minus one. Which is four divided by two, which is two. You know, you this is actually two here. It means that it is ten. To get it, you can also you know use this formula to calculate the number of you know cables needed. Is it okay? So in your exam, like for example, I can ask you know I can give any number to 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 you. Like we have you know uh, fifteen nodes. Calculate the number of cables needed to to make the network, or make the network you know and tell how many cables are actually needed. You know then you can just use this formula to calculate the number of cables. Is it okay? Good. So now we we know about mesh topology, and uh, next topology uh, is actually star topology. So you know about mesh, which is very good. And then I will I will I will talk about you know what are the advantages and disadvantages of a particular topology, which is very important to understand in the in the in, the, in this course. And then you can design any topology. So now. Uh, like you have a star topology. So star, so as the as the name is, I didn't get this class ended like 15 minutes ago, but it's too interesting. Sorry, Freddie, what happened? 
it ends ends at five table again sorry sorry i didn't hear you properly okay yeah it will finish at five o'clock but i will leave you at 10 minutes before so it's okay don't worry <laughs> i will not take your more time sorry is it okay so i will just explain i'll just finish the next topology which is uh, you know uh, star topology and then later on um, you know i will uh, i will talk you know uh, i will okay good good freddy so you see at a star it's it's like a star so next topology is star so star here it means that you know you make a star here so it means that you have a node you have a another node and then you make a star so the topology looks like this okay so here we have you know different uh, you know uh, you know different uh, you know ways of, you know you have already created it so here we have you know advantages and advantage disadvantages of different topologies like we have you know four nodes so mesh topology will be like this so it means that if we talk about what are the advantages of you know mesh topologies over the star topology so you can say that you know mesh topology is quite reliable because you know even if you know one of the link breaks there is still connections it means that you know you don't have to worry about the connections you can you can still send you know traffic here but in you know uh, in, in 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 star topology you see that you have you know four uh, you know you have here you know uh, four nodes so you need three cables here and if you have five nodes you need four cables so like for example if you want to make another star with five nodes so you can actually make it so this is the the, the star kind of topology so it means that there is a central problem so it, it means that if central nodes node corrupts it means that if it doesn't work it means that you cannot communicate so that's the problem in the in the star topology but in but in in, in mesh topology there is not such kind of problem even though one of the node fails you know other nodes can communicate and here there is another another thing here if for example if n nodes fails you know then you can still communicate but if central hub or you can say central node i will say it i will not say it hub now because it's, it's a first class and you may not be knowing the difference what is hub and what is router etc so you can just say that you know you, that uh, you know uh, you know if central hub just fails uh, it, it will fail central node just fails it will just the, the communication will not work but if if the end nodes you know uh, end node fails then still communication works do you understand here what i want to say here so we have you know different advantages and disadvantages and then we have another kind of topology which is ring topology so where you have a we have a ring here so it means that we have different we have uh, you know multiple nodes Uh, connected together but they are in the in the in the ring fashion where you just create a ring a ring so you have a sorry so we have a ring so you form a ring con a ring connection so it means that this is the ring topology here so you have connection here so it means that if one of the connection is failed and it also depends on here in the connection whether the the connection is half duplex or full duplex okay if it is full duplex then it means that if this connection fails still you can communicate through other path but if other path is also failed then it is you are gone here so it means that you cannot make it working here from this path from for this node but for other nodes it can communicate but if a, but if it is half duplex kind of channels so there there is a problem it means that one way can be used for transmission and the other way could be used for rece reception so it means that if one of the cable is is breaking it means that you can not use the entire network here so that's the problem with the with the ring topology so do you get it here yeah that's yeah. right okay good so i will yeah. just talk about the last topology which is actually yeah. bus topology so bus topology it's like a central topology here so you have uh, you have a central connection here so you have central cable which is a uh, and then with this cable multiple nodes are connected so it's like a bus connection so in the bus you have a central lane where you actually go and then you have seats here so you have here 
connection here. So the problem with this kind of topology is that, you know, if, you know, this bus line is failed, it means that, you know, the communication will never happen. Entire network will break. And also, you know, it means that, you know, if every, if anybody wants to go use this line, uh, it means that they need to share the media. So it means that contention will happen. So it means that if, for example, there are, you know, like uh, if there are people like in the bus, we have seats here and here people wants to go uh, use this line. It means that others have to wait one at a time can actually, you know, use the lane. So that's the, that's the kind of topology we have, uh, the bus topology. But now I will stop. Uh, so that, you know, uh, you can, uh, I think it's fine for, for not today. Our time is going to finish soon. So, if, but if you have any questions, uh, I can take it now. Yes, I can, I can give you the formula too. It, 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 it's, it's easy. So like, for example, if it is ring topology, so like, for example, you want to create a ring of two nodes. So how many cables you need? Two cables, two nodes. Okay. And if you have a, um, three node, three nodes. Okay, so how many uh, cables you need to uh, to make a ring topology of three nodes? Three cables. So it's n is equal to n. You know, if you need n nodes, you need n cables. Do you get it here? Uh, so here, uh, like you have four nodes, you want to make a ring. So you need four cables. Do you get it here? It's simple, so I didn't tell you, but in exam I can ask questions, you know. So how many cables are needed in ring and how or how many are needed in mesh? Is it okay? So and in star, for example, in star you can just say that you know, if for example, three nodes, also three cables, four nodes, three cables, and uh, because one is central nodes, and you can just say five nodes. So you have Four, so it means that you need actually uh, so four cables. So here you have four nodes, uh, five nodes. You need four cables. So for uh, for star, it is n minus one. So if for star, if you have n nodes, you need n minus one cables. For ring, you need uh, if you have n nodes, you need n cables. For mesh. You need, you have, if you have n nodes, you need n multiplied by n minus one divided by two cables. And if it is bus, then it is different. You need a central cable anyway. And if you need three nodes, then you need three cables, this plus this central cable. So it means that you need n plus one. Do you get it here? n plus one for bus topology. No, uh, ring topology, so you are saying about ring topology, the formula, it's quite simple. So see, formula is N. Like for example, you see two nodes, how many cables are needed to make a ring? Two cables. If you have uh, three nodes, you want to make a ring. It is actually also a mesh here for three nodes. It's mesh for three node is same as, uh, you know, a ring topology here. So it, you need actually three. So three nodes, three cables. Okay. And if you have four nodes in a ring topology, you need a, to make a, a ring. So you need actually four cables. So it means that if you have N nodes, you need N cables for ring. Four cables, you need four, yeah, four nodes, you need four cables for ring. And for uh, for mesh, you need n multiplied by n minus one divided by two. And for star, you need n minus one cables. If you have, if you need, if, if you want to create a, a star network of, for example, four nodes, you need you know, uh, three cables. So this is the this is the star. So you need actually three cables. Is that n minus one? But for bus, it's n plus one. And for reliability point of view, you can always discuss which one is you know better network. You know, so you can you can just say. 
Okay, good. So my time is is, is finished now for today. Uh, so I will talk tomorrow. We will install Wireshark, and I will just talk about Wireshark. You know uh, how it works. Not more things about tomorrow about it, but you know what are the points, what you can trace, what you can, how you will capture traffic, etc. Just that point, and then I will, you know, I will, uh, you know, ask you to to actually install it and run it in your system. So that's what I will do tomorrow. Is it okay? Yeah, good. But but Daniel has a question. Do we have a mark lab tomorrow? What do you mean? Mark lab. Yes, we have a lab tomorrow. It won't be marked. It is just a just an exercise. Okay, good. So see you tomorrow then. You, you, yeah. So there will be many exercises uh, later on, but you know, but they, those won't be marked. Only the week 12th, you know, there will be exam and uh, there will be CA and that will be marked. Okay, good. And then see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.